By the Scottish play, I assume you mean Macbeth. <laughs> Hello, my name is Megan Ruth. I'm a Canadian living in London, England, and I react to British things. Apologies if I'm a little bit low energy. I feel like I might be coming down with something. You know that feeling before you get sick? You're not sick yet, but that feeling before you get sick, I feel like I'm experiencing that. <laughs> my nose is starting to get a little bit stuffed, but nothing too crazy, so I should be fine to film this. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's hope I don't come down with anything, because I really don't want to get sick. <laughs> but anyway, today I'm reacting to Blackadder, the third episode four I think yes episode four if you're new here welcome I have reacted to the previous episodes already if you want to watch those I have a playlist devoted to it I'll post a link to that down below just like the majority of my reactions this video will be edited if you wanted to see the unedited reaction I'll also post a link to my patreon down below thanks to my patrons for supporting me especially my top tier patrons Joseph Brian Reese Kane Robin Andy Hypnobob Chris Emil Julian Stevo Patrick Lloyd Sean Danny Mark City 10 and hi Chris 1980 let's just get started shall we well, don't you like it then no I don't a lot of stupid actors strutting around, shouting with their chests thrust out so far, you'd think their nipples were attached to a pair of charging elephants. <laughs> and the worst thing about it is having to go with Prince Mini Brain. Well, doesn't he like it either? No, no, he loves it. The problem is he doesn't realise it's made up. Last year, when Brutus was about to kill Julius Caesar, the prince yelled out, Look behind you, Mr. Caesar. <laughs> I can't see the point in the theatre. All that sex and violence. I'll get enough of that at home. <laughs> sort of a sexual. Like our poor play. We hope it pleased you, friend. Certainly not, you murdering rotter! Dogs, <laughs> arrest that man! <laughs> it's only a play. Oh, well, that's all very well, but what about the poor fellow who's dead? Saying it's only a play will not feed and clothe the little ones he leaves behind. Call the militia! But, sir, he's not dead. See, he stands awaiting your applause. Oh, I say, that's very clever. He's <laughs> <laughs> really dead. Oh, bravo! Bravo! This reminds me of Monty Python on the Holy Grail, where he goes, I'm not dead! I'm not dead! <laughs> Two classic British comedies, I must say, Blackadder and Monty Python. Brilliant. <laughs> to the stupid prince who grows fat on the profits! I say, how exciting! Oh my Amazing. god. Better and better, brother! <laughs> it's not a play anymore, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down and make your way quietly to the exit. <laughs> you old thing. Your trouble is you can't tell when something's real or when it's not. Oh no. <laughs> I must say, Black Adam, that was a close shake. Well, my suspicions were first aroused by his use of the words, death to the stupid prince. <laughs> <laughs> These are volatile times, your highness. The American Revolution lost your father, the colonies. The French Revolution murdered brave King Louis. And there are tremendous rumblings in Prussia. Although that might be something to do with the sausages. <laughs> the whole world cries out, peace, freedom, and a few less fat bastards eating all the pie. <laughs> I imagine the French Revolution scared the British royals at the time. I imagine they were thinking, oh crap, is that going to happen over here? Shit. <laughs> but they probably still think that, actually. I don't think they're scared that the British public is going to murder them. I think we've kind of evolved past that. I'd hope. I mean, it happened to the French. It could happen here, too. Who knows? <laughs> they're worked up, sir, because they're so poor, they are forced to have children simply to provide a cheap alternative to turkey at Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Disease and deprivation stalk our land like two giant stalking things. Another one, Your Highness? Yes, another one, actually. You remember that one I, I had a- <coughs> Oh, I think I'm getting sick, guys. No, not during Blackadder. Oh. Uh, wearing underwear on the outside to save on laundry bills. Well, this time, I'm thinking to myself, hello, why don't we ask those two actor chappies we saw tonight to teach me how to recite your speech? Brilliant, eh? No, Your Highness. Feeble through this admiring rubble. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've come with a proposition. How dare you, sir? You think just because we're actors, we sleep with everyone. <laughs> Being actors, you're lucky to sleep with anyone. <laughs> well, what do you think? Oh my god. Are you ill or something? <laughs> no, I was simply trying to look more like an actor. Well, I'm sure you don't need the false moustache. Last time he we went to the theatre, three of them murdered Julius Caesar. <laughs> One of them was his best friend, Brutus. As I have told you about eight 
times. The man playing Julius Caesar was an actor. Oh, God, it's pathetic. <laughs> I have to bring up Friends again. I'm sorry if you don't watch Friends, which I feel like most of my subscribers don't. But uh, there's an episode where Joey, who's a soap opera star, uh, is contacted by one of his fans and she thinks that his character is real and that he's actually his character in the soap opera and it's just it's really funny and it's it's great and yeah another great comedy what can i say i wonder if the writers from friends got their idea from black adder though that would be funny as well <laughs> friends was playing Macbeth. <laughs> incidentally Baldrick. Actors are very superstitious. On no account mention the word Macbeth this evening, all right? Why not? It brings them bad luck and it makes them very unhappy. Oh. This is actually very true. You shouldn't say Macbeth in a theater. When I was a teenager, I was a part of a theater company and if you were caught saying Macbeth, you had to run around the building three times or something. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> but also quite serious, never say Macbeth in a theater. If you do need to refer to Macbeth, you have to say the Scottish play. <laughs> What, Macbeth? Ah! Hot potato, off the sauce, but to make amends. Ah! Oh, Lord, you mean you have to do that every time I say Macbeth? Ah! Hot potato, off the sauce, but to make amends. Can you please stop saying that? Always call it the Scottish play. So you want me to say the Scottish play? Yes! Rather than Macbeth. Ah! Hot potato, off the sauce, but to make amends. Ah! And the keys, clean up! Yeah. That's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> that is Baldrick spring cleaning. Rubbish, look, it's a bomb. It's not a bomb, sir. It's a sponge. <laughs> oh, yes, we'll get it out of here at once before it explodes. <laughs> That's a weird place to be spring cleaning. I think Baldrick just likes to listen into conversations. I think he likes to just be a little spy. I don't think he's cleaning at all. There's no way you'd be able to do a thorough clean in that position. <laughs> no way. Well, your very posture tells me here is a man of true greatness. Either that or here are my genitals. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really must ask that this ill-educated oaf be removed from the room. One more foot wrong and the contract between us will be as broken as this milk jug. But that milk jug isn't broken. You really do walk into these things, don't you? Walk from And from your leading character in a play connected with Scotland, that's Macbeth, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See, I was under the impression that the superstition about Macbeth only really mattered in a theater. You can say Macbeth outside of a theater, but you can't say it inside of a theater. That's what my interpretation of that superstition was. Clearly, they think it's superstitious wherever they are, not just a theater. Very interesting, but it also makes it funnier, too because then they're just doing this wherever. They could be doing this in a supermarket. <laughs> Someone could say Macbeth in a supermarket and they'd be like having to do their little thing there, which would be funny. <laughs> I'm accustomed as I am. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's kill the prince. He shall strike first. Let me... <laughs> Dagger's point prick out his soft eyeball and sup with glee upon its exquisite jelly. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is a classic actor problem. When you're rehearsing and you don't want your neighbors to think like you're in trouble. I used to have this problem when I was an actor and I was rehearsing, you know, certain things at school mainly. And... <laughs> I was rehearsing a scene with my scene partner in, in my bedroom and we were doing a fighting scene where we were fighting and screaming and stuff. And my roommates were so concerned for me. They were like, are you okay? <laughs> Megan, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's just acting. It's just acting. I'm sure every actor has a story like that, to be fair. <laughs> well, Mr. Blackadder says, when the going gets tough, the tough hide under the table. <laughs> where is he? Oh, uh, he's in Sardinia. Take an extra thousand. Guineas? Per month? All right, what's your problem? 
Oh, <laughs> turned out to be vicious anarchists. They intend to kill us all. We beg for mercy. Mercy, mercy please. please uh, mercy. I've only got one thing to say to you. Macbeth. <laughs> 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 Surely, if you're gonna die anyway, conspiracy theories don't matter because you're gonna die. So, like, there's no point in protecting yourself against witchcraft or, I don't know, conspiracy. <laughs> Unless you're trying to get into heaven, of course. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Emma, thank you. Well, you can start by not calling me bladder, sir. <laughs> What's the play called? Thick Jack Clot sits in the stocks <laughs> and gets pelted with rancid tomatoes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So brilliant, so funny. And also about actors too. I love some meta. I love some stories about actors. Also, I feel like I remember hearing or learning um, that actors back then were not noblemen. They were more on the poor working class economic scale. Definitely in Shakespeare's time, they were more working class for sure. It's interesting seeing actors from that time period being portrayed as more noblemen with all like the pompous and the makeup and the wigs and everything. But yeah, super entertaining and super fun. And now you know, never say Macbeth in the theater. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you next time, bye.